Let's do a little thought experiment. Imagine for a moment that you're a subject in an experiment and they take your arm and place it in a cast so that it's locked at a 90 degree angle. And they keep you like this for the course of several weeks. When it eventually comes off, your arm is quite different. It's undergone some significant changes. Of course, you would have lost muscle. You haven't been using it, you haven't been training it, but the changes go deeper than that because the very architecture of the muscle will have changed. That's because your muscle has begun to adapt to its new functional range, shortening the very length of the components that make up the muscle, the muscle fibers. To use the technical term, you'll see a reduction in the sarcomeres in series, meaning that there are fewer contractile proteins arranged end to end. And of course, this is gonna have big implications for us when it comes to the way that we can move and the force we can exert. At first, we might not be able to move the joint much at all due to stiffness. But even once this wears off, our ability to exert force across that full range of motion will be significantly diminished. Now, at first, this might sound a bit like body horror, having your muscles forcibly changed against your will. But what if I told you that something like that is likely happening to you right now, and it happens all the time? So there are studies like this looking at cases of individuals who've had their joints immobilized for whatever reason. Fun story, this actually specifically happened to me. I had my arm in an elbow cast for actually several months due to some complications and my arm was so weak I couldn't even lift it up on its own. I had to use my other arm to lift that withered arm. But if you sit in the same hunched posture every single day, several muscles in your body are continuously being shortened. They're being immobilized in just the same way and your body will adapt in just the same way and you're gonna lose not only range of motion but also force production. It's sobering to think that our productivity focused lifestyles have physically altered our bodies to become more efficient work machines and less efficient at self-expression and movement. Now you might think this isn't a problem, you can just counteract it with mobility stretches or with regular training. But the truth is that these types of training aren't enough to undo this specific effect. If you train with heavy weights in the gym, you can make your muscles bigger, but you're not going to lengthen those fascicles, those muscle fibers in the same way that you would do with specific other forms of training. But of course, there's good news. The reason I'm making this video is that there is a strategy you can use in order to counteract this effect. You can use this strategy to target muscles that have been shortened by poor posture and thereby regain your normal muscle length and power. But furthermore, you can use this strategy across the board in order to unlock your untapped athletic potential to improve your running speed, your jumping height, by giving you more ability to use your muscles across their full functional range. Now, keep in mind that what we're not talking about here is the muscles visibly shortening end to end. This isn't gonna make you taller or make your arms look longer because the actual length of your muscle belly is more to do with your tendons and your insertions. That said, it might have some effect on the resting length of the muscle because this is connected to the optimum length of the muscle, which we're gonna talk about in a moment. And it follows that longer fibers would enjoy a slightly lengthier resting state. But I haven't been able to find research that explicitly makes this connection. So we're gonna just put that to one side for now. We're talking about architectural changes within the muscle, the way that the contractile proteins are actually arranged within the muscle fibers. So as mentioned, what we're talking about here are sarcomeres in series. So sarcomeres are the smallest contractile unit of muscle. They're comprised of actin and myosin, which are proteins that move on top of each other in order to collapse the sarcomere. And as your sarcomeres contract, when enough of them contract, it causes the muscle fiber as a whole to contract. And when enough of those contract, then the muscle shortens and that's how you produce force. You can't increase the number of muscle fibers you have, but by increasing the number of sarcomeres, you can make them thicker and larger. And when you do this enough, it makes the whole muscle appear bigger. But it might then be a bit reductive to talk about hypertrophy, making the muscles bigger. A much more interesting question is, bigger how? Are the muscle fibers getting thicker or are they getting longer? Your body is actually smart enough to adapt to the very specific demands placed on it in the case of muscle changes, this occurs via mechanotransduction, signaling processes that are triggered by specific 
forces acting upon the muscles, in this case leading to altered gene expression, changing the physical makeup of the muscle. Were you to hold a dumbbell at a 90 degree angle for long enough, you'd expect this to send some kind of signal to the body to adapt. Likewise though, if you're holding a position where you're hunched forwards, your body's going to adapt to that. And when we're sitting, many of us sit with our shoulders hunched forwards, our neck pitched forwards, our arms stretched out in front of us to reach the keyboard, wrist at an awkward angle to operate the mouse, pelvis tilted, back rounded, and hips flexed with our knees up nearer to our chest. Over time, this causes many of those muscles to become shorter, the hip flexors, the pecs, and this has the exact same effect as if we were to seal them in a cast, causing those muscle fibers to become physically shorter. So how do we send that strong signal to make them longer again? Well, we could spend an equal amount of time with those same muscles in a lengthened position, but I mean, you're not gonna get into the crab pose and just hold it for eight hours a day. So what is this secret technique to lengthen the muscle fibers? Well, we can use something called eccentric training. Many of you will already be familiar with eccentric training. Eccentric training basically means the lengthening portion of any movement. So instead of emphasizing the part where you lift the weight up in a curl, you're gonna emphasize the part where you lower it slowly back down. So you're gonna lower it as slowly as possible against that resistance or jump up to a pull up bar and then really slowly allow yourself to lower back down. Here you're accentuating the eccentric portion of the movement. Usually this means that you're lowering the weight or yourself down in a controlled manner, but not always. So it's not really about the direction of the movement, but whether the target muscle is shortening, which is a concentric contraction, or lengthening, which is an eccentric contraction or eccentric. And as it would happen, this kind of training can increase sarcomeres in series. Good news. So in theory then, we could use eccentric training to undo some of the damage caused by poor posture. Now this won't necessarily fix your posture because your posture is the result of multiple different factors, such as habit, for example, what your preferred resting length of the muscle is and your preferred resting tone. And like I said, we haven't found a direct connection between sarcomeres in series and resting length of the muscle. But with that said, we might be able to use eccentric training to undo some of the negative effects that your posture could have had on your performance. So for example, if you've got shortened pecs, you could use very slow eccentric flies in order to undo some of that damage and to regain the strength at the end ranges of motion. Flies might work particularly well as there's also an element of a weighted stretch involved. Now, while weighted stretching has not been definitively shown to increase sarcomeres in series in a preferential manner, it is nevertheless a good way to get more bang for your buck because you're also getting a stretch in there. This could have beneficial impact for throwers or for martial artists throwing a punch because they can generate more power at that most stretched position at the amortization phase of the movement, which is exactly what we want. So just to describe this a little bit better, if you were to try and throw a ball as far as possible, you'd start by rotating your shoulder backwards and bringing the opposite hip forwards. So what you're doing here essentially is winding up the body. You're twisting this way to stretch the muscles that you're going to use, loading them so that you can then exert the maximum force across the maximum distance. This also helps you to engage as much muscle mass as possible by using the serape effect. But if you were to stretch back too far, rotate back too far, you'd actually now lose power because the muscle would now be too stretched. It's gone beyond the optimum muscle length. But by using eccentric training, we can increase the optimum muscle length, meaning you could rotate back further, meaning you could exert even more force and throw the ball even further. And there are studies showing directly that eccentric training will improve your mobility, giving you greater range of motion, but also your force output at a greater range of motion. And these studies generally conclude that this has great implications for sports training in general. So for example, one study found that fencers could improve their lunge length by training eccentrically with their hamstrings. Others have shown that it can potentially transfer to greater running speed because your glute is in a stretched position as it exerts force on the ground when you're running. The same thing goes from jumping from a standing position. What we're doing here is changing the optimum muscle length. So the optimum muscle length refers to the length at which the muscle can exert the most force. So one of the reasons that we always have a little bit of tension in our muscles, called our muscle tone, is because we need a little bit of tension in order to exert maximum force when we want it. So for example, if you want to jump as high as possible, you're gonna dip down into a squat, but you're not gonna dip all the way so your ass touches the grass, because then it's much harder to get out of that position and jump up higher. With eccentric training, the optimum muscle length is actually extended meaning that you have more muscle to play with when it comes to exerting force. If your maximum power starts at a greater stretch, then you have a 
greater distance at which to generate power and momentum. And this is how we can tap into that greater athletic potential that I was talking about. You know, if the joint is already half bent before you can exert maximum force, then you don't have much space to exert that force across. And so you're limiting the amount of force you can produce. Eccentric training has a ton of other benefits as well. It can actually increase your maximum speed of contraction. So it's definitely something you want to start playing around with. And of course, this has also been shown to reduce injury risk because you're gaining more strength and thus more control with your muscles in those more vulnerable lengthened positions. So to incorporate these ideas into our training, what we might want to do is look at the muscles that may have become shorter from our lifestyles, from our regular postures, and then use this training to counteract that. Like I say, you can use deep flies to counteract short pecs. Likewise, you might use some kind of eccentric training for your hip flexors to gain more power and explosiveness there to lift your legs up faster when you're running. And of course, if we're training for athleticism, we want to target specific muscle groups here as well. For example, the glutes, if we want to exert more force when running. Or for example, we might want to deliver more power when rotating at the hips if we're a martial artist. Something else to keep in mind though is that eccentric training does create extra muscle damage. This is the good kind that leads to hypertrophy, but if you're going to be using a lot of this kind of training, then you also need longer recovery times. So make sure to program that in. At the same time, you might want to look at your lifestyle and start addressing some of the ways in which you could be negatively impacting on your muscle fiber length. So for example, improving your posture at work, that really just means moving a lot because as they say, your next posture is your best posture. At the same time, they might want to look at other things you do regularly. So for example, if you currently wear traditional footwear with a heel, this is going to do a number on your calves. Regular viewers probably already know where I'm going with this. That's why I'm happy to introduce today's sponsor, Vivo Barefoot. So Vivo Barefoot make barefoot shoes, minimal shoes, meaning they're designed to allow you to move in a more natural way, to get out of your body's way, essentially. There's no heel to toe drop, for example, meaning your foot is flat on the floor, allowing it to move as it's supposed to, putting your calf back in its regular position. At the same time, this means your toes aren't bent upwards against the floor. At the same time, the wider toe box means your toes can splay out as they're supposed to. In general, you're no longer immobilizing the muscles in your feet and your lower legs. Vivo Barefoot make my favorite barefoot shoes. They are fantastically well-made. They last forever and they're extremely comfortable. Moreover, they look really cool and there's such a wide variety. You can find a barefoot shoe for like any situation, whether you're going hiking, whether you're going into the office, whether you're going shopping or whether you're going to the gym. I recently made a video on training like Solid Snake, which you guys should check out because it's one of my best videos and not that many people watched it. I actually wore a pair of Vivo Barefoots there that were designed to look more like boots and they perfectly fit the role. And right now, because it's the end of the year, Vivo Barefoot are actually offering an even bigger discount than usual for viewers of my channel. If you use code Bioneer20, you can then get 20% off of a pair of Vivos. This discount is exclusive to my channel and it's only available till the end of the year. So if you want to get in on that, then head to the link in the description down below. It's after the new year, then you can use my regular discount code. That's the Bioneer15 for 15% off. A huge thank you to Vivo Barefoot, who've been fantastic to work with this year. So what do you think guys? Do you use eccentric training? Did you know that it could change the length of your muscle fibers? Let me know in the comments down below. Let me know any other tips that you found and thanks a ton for watching this one. Thanks as well for all of your support this year. I don't know exactly what time this is gonna be going up, what day, so Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays, whatever you celebrate, Happy New Year, and I hope you have a fantastic 2024. See you then and bye for now.